Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 16. <clears throat> Ezekiel 26. Isaiah 26. Ezekiel is the 26th book of the Bible. In that day, I told you, in that day, mark it in your Bible. Shall this song be sing, sung in the land of Judah? We have a strong city. Not so today. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. There are no walls over there. God ain't over there. You got a bunch of Roman Catholic nuns and priests and people running around there trying to tell you that this is where Jesus was, this is what Jesus did, this is the fourth. They don't know nothing. They don't even have the right God. They're God's female. Then you got a bunch of Arabians living over there. They're not right with God. Then you got a bunch of Christians. Oh, we're going to visit the holy city. What's so holy about it? It's full of sin, full of wickedness. I'll, I'll visit the holy land when the Lord Jesus Christ is seated on the throne of David. Other than that, I'm going to go to a desert place. I'll stay here in America and go to Arizona. That place is just as worse. Open ye the gates. Are there any walls in Jerusalem today? I know there's a wailing wall. So in the millennium, there's going to be walls. And there's going to be gates. <clears throat> that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth, may enter in. Ooh. The truth in a righteous nation. No, it's not America. So shut up. America won't even be around. The righteous nation will be Israel under the Lord Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee. Because he trusts in thee. You want perfect peace? You want a right mind? You stay in the Lord. You'll be fine. Listen, amongst all kinds of troubles, God will take, you, take care of you. If you have the fruit of the Spirit, the nine fruits, man, you can get through anything. It's when you step out of the Lord. Trust ye in the Lord forever. Not just Sunday morning. Not just when the car breaks down. Not just when, you know, uh, somebody's got a hold of your bank account and has now stolen all your money. I pray before I leave for my family. I pray for the car that I, I drive. I pray for my job. I pray that I perform what is expected of me so my boss doesn't get in trouble. I rest in the Lord all the time. And guess what? I don't rest and I don't trust in the Lord all the time. There's a lot of times I fail. There are many times that, you know, I'll put gospel tracts out and I forgot to pray over them when I did it. There's many times I, I don't trust the Lord. I've got myself in trouble. Trust ye in the Lord forever for in the Lord Jehovah there you go. Not Allah. Not Mary. Not someone toe or whoever. Jehovah is everlasting strength. So if your God is not Jehovah, he ain't your God. He ain't the great God. Now remember, this is a song. For he, Jehovah, bringeth down them that dwell on high. Look who I am. Look who I was. The lofty city. Lofty, you know, that loft that, that's in the top part of a building. I don't know if I... There's a certain pancake place. I mean, if you go eat there, you always got these, you know, the lofty ceilings. They're, they're wonderful. I like, I like how they are. But that's lofty. It's high. It's upper. You know, Jesus said there are people who want the upper room. Look who I am. The balcony. 
he lays it low. You know, you know who did that in the Bible? Samson. He brought he brought the lofty people down. He lays it low, even to the ground. <laughs> That's what Samson did. He brings it even to the dust. That's what Samson did. He brought the Philistines down. He brought them down to he brought them down to the grave. Samson's a type of Jesus Christ. Now all types don't go all the way now. Samson had his sins. But he trusted in the Lord. That's all the trouble that Samson got into. He is listed in the heroes of the faith in Hebrews 11. So don't give me your bone. The foot shall tread it down. Even the feet of the poor and the steps of the needy. The people are going to walk over. You know, they walked over me. That's where the expression goes from. The way of the just is uprightness. Do you want to be just? Walk upright. Evolution tells you, you know, we used to walk, you know, like monkeys walk, and then no. Thou most upright does way the path of the just. You pray over what you're going to do. You seek counsel what you're going to do. You're going to seek God what you're going to do so you can be just. Yea, in the way of the judgments, O Lord, have we waited for thee. The desire of our soul is to thy name and to the remembrance of thee. You can't say that about the Jew today unless he's saved. But 99% of the Jews today, you cannot say. They listen, 99% of Jews, they don't care about going back to Israel. They're not wanting the temple to be built. God's got to put Satan to get them to go back over there. They're making good money in America. They're changing the laws in America. I, I hate to say it, a lot of these laws and all that are by the Jewish people. Germany blamed all their, their crisis upon the Jews. They were the ones getting all the money in Germany. They were the bankers. Money was good. They weren't going to go back to Israel. God had to say, okay, Adolf Hitler, will you send them back? Yes, sir. It took a war. for the World War II, it took a war for the Jews to go back to their homeland. They don't go back every Passover, and the law says three times a year the males are supposed to go. They don't. You're not supposed to break the bone of it. They break the bone of it and put it on the plate. <clears throat> With my soul, that's your eternal, have I desired thee in the night? Can't sleep? Seek the Lord. Yea, with my spirit, that's your breath, within me will I seek thee early, morning. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Can you say that about that today? With all the crooked police and all the crooked uh, judges and all the, the crooked anything to do with the, with the legal system of America? You think they're learning righteousness? Let favor be shown to the wicked. Oh, look at that. Damn them. No, you don't damn them. You show them favor. That's an Old Testament. Where are the Old Testament? You know, David says, Lord, go kill them all. Yet there's mercy. Why is that shown up in Isaiah 26? In the millennium, there are still people who do wrong. Man is a sinner. There are people who will be cast in the lake of fire. There are people that Satan, when he gets loose, finds an army to go against God. Give, it a, give a chance to a wicked man. Maybe he can, yet, will he not learn righteousness? Uh-oh. So even in the millennium, there are people who will not learn to do right. With Jesus, with a perfect environment, with no pollution, no ghettos, no... Man's nature is rebelling against God. That's what Adam did. 
Don't eat the fruit. No, 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 no. What'd you do, Adam? She did it. What'd you do, Eve? He did it. No, why don't you just say, Lord, we did not do what you told us to do. How about that? What part of thou shalt not? How many commandments are there? Eleven. What's the first commandment? Thou shalt not eat that fruit. The first commandment was broken. In the land of the upright. 26.1. We saw. Uprightness. I hate when they do that with the words. In the land of uprightness. I got upright one part and the next one's nest. Will. He. The wicked. Deal unjustly. So what the Lord Jesus Christ says, he's going to do unjustly. That guy cussed me out for witnessing to him. They're going to do that wickedness right before Jesus Christ. They did it when he was here the first advent. And will not behold the majesty of the Lord. They're not going to give the honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. They do that today. Lord, when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see. But they shall see and be ashamed for their envy at the people. Yea, the fire of thy enemies shall devour them. Uh-oh. In the millennium, there's a lake of fire right there, down by the Dead Sea. And you don't want the Lord Jesus Christ to turn to you and say, go jump in the lake. As his expression goes. And if you don't want to do it, I guarantee there will be a couple angels that would help you out. One angel destroyed an entire army overnight. I think one angel can do the job. If not, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be interesting if one of the Christians that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today, who's ruling the cities, it was the ruler of the city that you are, uh, St. Fred, yeah? He's been judged. Cast him off. Yes, sir. Doesn't the Bible say, don't you know, you shall ju judge angels, you shall judge? Judge not, least you be judged. Yeah, okay. Lord, thou will ordain peace for us, Israel. Skip 11. Lord, when, when thy hands lifted up, they will not see, but they shall see and be ashamed. For their envy at the people, yea, the fire of thy enemy shall devour them. Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us, the Jews, for thou hast wrought, made, wrought means made, doing something, wrought all our works in us. O Lord our God, other lords, Egyptian, Assyrian, Babylon, Rome, etc., Imagine the people of Jesus' time said, we have, we're in bondage to no one. What? Who are you talking to? We have no king but Caesar. What about the book of Judges? And they, and they did bad and God sent this nation to go in. And they got right. And then they got bad and God sent it. I'm telling you. Other lords besides thee have had dominion over us. Book of Judges. Exodus. The Gospels. But by thee only will we make mention of thy name. Hmm. Can that be said today? They are dead. They shall not live unsaved. They are deceased. They shall not rise. In the millennium, they're gone. Those nations are gone. I will curse them that curse thee. Therefore thou hast visited and destroyed them. That's a visitation you don't want. I mean, go and tell people about Jesus. It's called visitation. Have you read the word visit in the Bible? 
Have you read the word visit, visitation? You can pick another word. You can say we're going house to house. That, that's a word that, that the disciples did. And destroyed them. How you doing? We're from the Baptist Church. We're here to destroy you. And made all their enemy, a memory, excuse me, to perish. So Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Rome will be no more one day. You won't even know those names. But well, what about an Egyptian that got saved? There's no, there's no, there will be no Baptists. There'll be no Catholics. There'll be no Egyptians. There'll be no Americans in glory. You are a Christian. You are a Christ. Thou hast increased the nation, Jewish, O Lord. Thou hast increased the nation. Thou art glorified. Real, today, are they glorified in the nation? Most of them, their God is cash, check, or money order. Thou hast removed it far unto all the ends of the earth. Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. In trouble have they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. Oh, look at that. So chastening causes you to pray to God, we learned the other night. Like as a woman with child that draws near to the time of her delivery is in pain. And I heard a comedian one time say, if you want to describe that pain for a man, you take your bottom lip and pull it over your head. That's about the most that a man would probably be able to feel to a woman giving birth to a baby. You know, that's, that's why God gave the ability to women. I mean, he, he gave that ability to men. Me. And cries out in her pangs. So have we been in thy sight, O Lord. That's what they are today. They're just in pain, in sorrow. And we read, have we read it, or was it something I read the other day? Something about, uh, I think I read it the other day, I was reading something about, well, I can't quote it, but you know, she's, she's about to give birth, but there's just no strength to give the birth. Yeah, we read that some point. That. And that's what Israel is today. There's no strength to get the birth. There's pain. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth when? No baby. Can you imagine the sorrow that a woman, nine months, and how many hours, so I'll say it, so it depends on the woman, she goes through the, uh, I don't know what you call when a woman, in the, in the, in the process, of, you know, she's ready to be delivered. The water's broke. She's in pain. And there's no child. Dead. It's not like Rachel where she gave birth to Benjamin and she died. No, the child, the whole entire time, and it's a stillborn. And that's what God's like in Israel today. You know, you painted the nursery. You thought about the name. You got the crib. I mean, and you, you know, you took pictures of you with the belly each month on a certain day, and you kept track. You know, you know, doctor. Here's the picture of the ultrasound, and here's the doctor. He said, "Here's the heartbeat." And look, there's a finger. Oh, it kicked, honey. Come feel it kick. Oh, the pain. The water's broken. Take me to the hospital. And the baby's dead.
My wife was giving birth to two children. I wasn't there for both both of them six seven. I remember the greatest scream that I ever heard out of her. Nothing just to be described that I don't know how to say it, but there was the baby embryo. You know, there's a dead child, never had a chance, never even named, no life. And that's what God liked his Israel. Now, we talk about a song, and now we turn to, here, here's a pregnancy that nothing's happened. You know what happens today to a Jew who are God's people? They are born and they never believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. They go to hell. That's sad. Paul says you're to pray for the for the for the peace in Jerusalem. You are to pray for the Jews. They're your enemy, the Bible says, but you are to pray for them. You are to witness to them. And like anybody else, if they do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, hell. The dead men and then finished 18. We have been with child, we have been in pain, we have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. The deliverance is the Lord Jesus Christ. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Thy dead men shall live. Jewish Ezekiel 37. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Verse 14 said, They are deceased, they shall not rise. Oh, that's a contradiction. Unleavened shall rise. There will be a day when all the dead will be brought up. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, body that's in the ground. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs. The earth shall cast out the dead. Israel is, is a dead nation today. But they're going to be alive. And Ezekiel has spoken of dry bones. They're spoken about those bones will be made into an army and breath will be given into them. They will live again. We're not talking about a resurrection here of the dead. We're talking about the nation will be alive one day and will be likened to God and will be in God's mercy and will be under the Messiah. Job 19, 29, uh, 25 to 28, First Corinthians 15, 39. Jonah's dead body was taken out alive. Of course, some don't believe Jonah died, but it's your miscalculation of reading the scripture. Come. Come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins shall be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Enter thou into thy chambers, rooms, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment. Uh-oh. Until the indignant nation be overpassed. But he that's on the rooftop, let him not go back down. Two in a bed shall be lying together. Jacob's trouble. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth. Second advent. Get in cell of Petra and hide yourself. And stay there. You know what God, you know, you know what the 
the spies told uh, Rahab, did you get in that house? Everybody in your family, you lock the door. And if anybody is not in that house, and they get killed, it's not our fault. If anybody gets killed that's in your house, that's our fault. So once you get a sale of Petra, you stay there. And you wait it out. I was told, I, don't, I, I think it was the 1800s, that a man went over there. I don't know if this through there. A man went over there and wanted to put uh, Bibles all over the place in that place. Hebrew Bibles. Wouldn't it be amazing if those Bibles were still there? The Holy Spirit works with them that the arrangement. Just open up and read while you what just read. Just read the Bible and you'll understand. Wouldn't it be interesting to read the book of Revelation while while Revelation is active? You imagine uh, somebody coming, hey Jacob, check out this. What? It says they have scorpion tails. Yeah, I saw one of them things. Water shall turn to blood. Yeah, I remember that. Where is that? You read Exodus? No, I read a New Testament called the book of Revelation that we never believed in. There have been Jewish rabbis that said, the book of Revelation proves if they were to believe that Jesus Christ is real. The book of Revelation. So, come my people, Jews, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. You ever see what Sarah Peter looks like? It looks like a bunch of homes, houses in the rock. Hide thyself, as it were, a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Overpass. Isn't that like a, a concrete bridge? Well, that's where they're going. They're going to a rock city. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place. Where is his place? Hmm. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Uh, let's see. Uh, it comes out of his place. He has a register. Dipped in blood, King of King, Lord of Lords, let's see. That's who? That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. Uh oh. God is love. Really? If you killed your son that you may have life and you totally reject your offering and use your son as a cuss name and as anything else but righteously, are you just going to be, oh, just love? I mean, if my son were to pull your son out of being hit by a car and, and my son died in it and all you do is blasphemy my son and make fun of him and stuff like that, use it, I'm not going to, I'm not going to love you. You find that very hard to love you. The earth also shall dis disclose her blood. Remember, God told Cain, "The blood of Abel cries out to me." America will be in trouble in verse twenty-one when all the murderers who have been getting hotel comfort. All the ones in America that have been slain by murder, Cain and Abel, is going to cry out, Lord Jesus, that man sat in prison for 46 years for killing me. Gang, a group of people, 
Lord, that man killed us all. He sat there, had free food, free air conditioning, free thing, and they didn't do anything about us. If Jimmy Hoffa was killed, his blood would cry out. Man may not know what happened to Jimmy Hoffa, but God knows. And shall no more cover her sling. There will be a day when a victim of a murder will cry out, and say to God, I demand justice. Or God will have to call up Cain and stand, have Cain stand before him and say, Cain, as God kneels down, I must apologize to you. I marked you because you killed your brother. And I let America go with all her murders. I don't think God's going to do that. Especially after he told Noah, any man that kills any man by, who's, by whosoever sheds man's blood, his blood shall be shamed. The, the law is there. Cain didn't know. There was no law for Cain. So God would have to call Noah and Moses and Paul, who said, listen, if I'm worthy of anything of death, I refuse not to death. He wants to call those men up and kneel down before those men and say, in, in the scriptures, I lied. I'm sorry. The book of Ecclesiastes says the sentence against, because it's not pronounced quickly. Men today are in jail, think they got away with it. And they will get released from jail, and they'll go out and do more, thinking, hey, what worse can they do for me? And don't realize that one day they're going to stand before God. And the eyes of the Lord are in every place behold the evil and the good. Now, can you imagine a lost man standing at the great white throne judgment who is a murderer and how many people he has killed call up and say, Lord, I know I'm going to hell. I know I did not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but that guy killed me. I demand justice. And can you imagine the Lord calling up all the legal, you know, justice and all that, who had a foul play in that, and will have to give an account. Bribery, whatever it was. God has set in the Old Testament from Genesis to Isaiah, we haven't even finished the Bible. If a man slays a man, you're to slay him. Now, why on earth are we a Christian nation and we take murderers and we house them with food, clothing, air conditioning, climate, and protection, and protection, security for us, and, you know, if they're really bad criminals, we'll put them in isolation, and think that God, God bless America. Really? You haven't read your Bible. The earth is going, Mother Earth is going to speak up one day. It's going to say, Lord, here is all the blood of people murdered. The names will be called out because God said to Cain, I hear your brother's blood crying to me. What a way to end it. We start to sing a song. And we end the chapter with people who have been killed. And it may even be war, too. What was the unrighteous war? For oil, of all things.
for a church to get denominants of all things. You know, I'd rather stand at the judgment seat of Christ and be under the blood of the Lord Jesus. I'm going to stand for sins I haven't confessed. Yeah, I guarantee you I will get ashes. But I sure wouldn't want to stand it before a holy, righteous God as my judge and be condemned. Because the Bible does speak of, we haven't got to that yet, but there are the different degrees in hell. Can you imagine being a murderer put into hell with the person that you killed and the family and the victims with you in hell that have not trusted Christ as your Savior? If you thought being in jail, seeing that guy's face, if you have any conscience being bad enough, think about being in all eternity looking at him, the one you killed. And they speak. Luke chapter 11. Wow. That's something to think about.